been said that life is a matter of choices. And every choice makes you who you are. There are those who choose to plot a course, choose to take on responsibility and deliver. Those who see that every person and thing around them is interconnected and are committed to shaping a successful future for all. At the Port of Long Beach, we are looking forward, listening closely, and leading the way, not only as the green port, but for all the things that make us the port of choice. We are dedicated to winning our customers' loyalty and trust by leading with confidence and being seen as we see ourselves. By recognizing the changing tides, we will continue charting a course to connect, enhance, and complement the efforts of our global customers and be a beacon for our local communities, all while keeping a promise of being environmentally focused and sustainable. Because we understand that the success of one depends on the success of all. We are united. We are the Port of Choice. everyone. I'm Cheryl Perry, President of Long Beach Heritage. I want to welcome you to our first ever virtual Preservation Awards. As you know, we were supposed to all be sitting in the beautiful Grand Salon aboard the Queen Mary last March, but because of COVID, everything had to be postponed. Unfortunately, not knowing when we'll be able to gather again as a group and not wanting to further postpone recognizing the amazing preservation projects that our awardees completed last year, we decided on the next best thing, a Zoom event. And who would have thought that preservationists could learn this new modern technology? Well, hey, here we are. So apparently you can teach old dogs new tricks. Even though we are seeing lots of challenges these days, the work of Long Beach Heritage to help preserve the historic resources of Long Beach still continues. Historic buildings and sites offer a powerful sense of place, continuity, and resi resilience that can help sustain us in times of such uncertainty. We are grateful for your support of our mission and want you to know that without you and people such as tonight's awardees, we couldn't do what we do. And we're also incredibly grateful for your patience. Uh, we know that we had to re adjust our plan several times for this event. Long Beach Heritage has <clears throat> begun celebrating local legacy businesses now more important than ever in our community. And we're happy to have two of those businesses with us tonight. The first is Legends, which has been in business since 1979. They've met adversity in the past, rebuilding their roof and interior after a fire in 2005. And now they're overcoming today's adversities, wearing masks and serving guests in their new parklet. So let's go check in now with Legends Manager, John Peterson. One of the unique features that we're extremely proud of um, that happened in our rebuild is this uh, ceiling, this vaulted ceiling. It's called the Lamella ceiling, I believe, and it's a really unique uh, architectural feature as well as just visually really stunning. You know, people can't get enough of it.
we're sitting here in our parklet, which is uh, outdoor fine dining at its best. And um, it's been a lot of work in progress, but we're really happy with how it's come out and uh, people seem to be enjoying it as well. We had Sarah make us a legendary margarita, a drink that we are extremely proud of, and it's uh, simple but amazing. And uh, this is this is it right here. As you can see, Legends is safely open for business, so stop by soon for one of those legendary margaritas and take a peek at that a peek at that beautiful roof. I'd like to thank the Port of Long Beach for their sponsorship of tonight's event. And even though we're not there this year, the Queen Mary, uh, which provided us many years of wonderful support and hospitality. We're pleased to kick off this year's Long Beach Architecture Week and hope that you will attend many of the great virtual events um, that you will have access to as a guest of our Preservation Awards. And if you attended last year's Architecture Week, you might have been fortunate enough to see Charles Phoenix's comedy slideshow perf performance, Long Beachland. If you did, then you know he's not only one of a kind, but he's very passionate about Long Beach. His boundless energy and enthusiasm are just what we need these days. So we are thrilled to have Charles as tonight's host. Please welcome our dear friend and the ambassador of Americana, Charles Phoenix. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Cheryl, for that lovely introduction. Welcome to the show. We are celebrating Long Beach tonight, you guys. How much do we all seriously love Long Beach? Where do we begin to behold the glory of our favorite seaside city? Yes, I, I well, okay, I might as well get it out in the open. I don't live in Long Beach. I've never lived in Long Beach, but I go there all the time, east, west, north, and south, constantly in search of well, there's something interesting around every corner, no matter where you go. I do have a special connection with Long Beach besides just that, because when my dad was one year old in 1939, my grandparents and him moved there from Ojai, not Ohio, Ojai. So they moved to Long Beach and they opened in the Wilmore Hotel, they opened a hot table to go. So my entire childhood, I heard of all these stories from the hot table to go and the Wilmore. Oh, also they had Geraldine's Pastry Shop. That's my grandmother's name, Geraldine. And then my grandfather had a paint store um, called Redondo Paints, which is now um, the Silver Fox, a gay bar. So there you go, go figure. Anyway, um, yeah, also there was like tons of stories about my uncle and my dad and all of his cousins and stuff, all sneaking on the red car to go down to the pike. And I mean, it goes on and on and on. So, you guys, before we get started and before we celebrate the winners and see their accomplishments, we are going to have a little slideshowette. They said, do you want to do a little slideshow? So let's get started with a little slideshowette. And here we go. How much do you guys seriously love this sign? It's probably about 1948, 1949. It's on the old road that went from the peninsula to Seal Beach, which I don't know if it got washed out. I don't know where it went or whatever, but the road is no longer there and neither has that sign. But I love the uh, creamsicle, uh, I mean, not creamsicle, fudgesicle, uh, vanilla chocolate ice cream color story of it. And don't you love that L, you guys? Where do we begin to talk about how much we love that L? Uh-oh. Okay, seriously, not joking around. This is major. This is real. This is very deep. This is one of the greatest neon signs in the known universe, we might as well get it out in the open now. Fly DC Jets, it is a local landmark, it is a world-class national treasure, it is a mid-century modern masterpiece. I'm sure that you will all agree with me because it's pretty obvious. I, my entire life, ever since I was big enough to focus on a neon tube of light, Every time I see it, it inspires my imagination and makes my spirit soar. Did I say it's been there since the year 
of 1958. Oh, by the way, you guys, okay. Seriously, I know. Um, yeah, Long Beach has more giant donuts than any other city on the planet. Long Beach is the capital of the world of giant donuts. This is Angel Food Donuts in our beloved Bixby Knolls. It's been there since 1955. We all know about the giant donut fight that happened with Dunkin' Donuts. It had a happy ending, and it's always going to be a happy ending as long as Long Beach continues to be the city with the most giant donuts. Okay. Now, as, as we were saying, as Cheryl said in the beginning, we have to support local businesses now more than ever. Long Beach is a treasure trove of local businesses. Uh, speaking of Bixby Knolls, in Bixby Knolls, there's a couple of my favorites. One is Young Awards Bacon Broil. Oh, go get a cake, go get a pie, go get a pot roast dinner, whatever. It's heaven on earth, but we're not talking about Young Awards right now. We are talking about George's 50s Diner, which you can see here started as Grissinger's Diner. Di uh -oh. Grissinger's drive-in coffee shop. I believe it was built in about 1952. It is crystal clearly a mid-century modern masterpiece of the absolute highest order, representing the era of the car, the original car hop restaurants that were round with a big pylon in the middle in the 1930s. And this is it moving to the street and becoming a googie style coffee shop. The signboard moves forward. The tower in the middle becomes a signboard that moves towards the street and the building stretches out to accommodate more people. So George inside, you're gonna see George when you go there. This is George. George is a survivor. He has been there since 1965. He started as a bus boy. This place is the real deal, heart and soul. You know, it burned in December of what was it, either 2017 or 18. And I mean, it is a true miracle that it came back. George is there working hard still. Please, I'm begging you, go have a hamburger at George's 50s Diner and savor the glory of this super amazing, rare, mid-century modern building, unique in all the world. Uh-oh. Speaking of unique in all the world, you guys, Killingsworth Brady is one of the great and most un greatest and most unsung mid-century modern architectural firms in the world. Killingsworth Brady of Long Beach. They started in the early 50s. And this is their office building, which still stands today. It was built in 1955. I mean, genius or what? Look at that. They took Post and Beam and they made it finer than just about any other mid-century modern Post and Beam house on the planet. Where do we begin to behold the glory of how exquisite, timeless, and classic this amazing design is? There is no such thing without, with, uh, there's no such thing as bringing somebody to Long Beach and not showing them this. Yes, the Killingsworth Brady office in Bixby Knowles on Long Beach Boulevard. I cannot recommend it enough. Oh, you want to move to Long Beach. I gotcha. I know. Or you already live there. You need another home. Fine. Here's one for you right here. This is one of the most extraordinary mid-century modern homes on the planet. 1970 Killingsworth Brady. This is Mr. Brady's home. And as you can see, it has a very tall front door, and I have dreamt of living there because I would love to hear more than anything when people came over to visit my, what a tall front door you have. So I will have to say that, um, okay, I'll admit it. Um, I was so curious to see the inside of the house. One day, I decided just to leap out of my car and go bolting to the door. Well, actually, I did not bolt. I walked up all poison proper and dignified just like my grandmother always wanted me to be. I rang the doorbell, took 12 steps back, and I said, um, they answered the door, and I'm like, you have the most beautiful mid-century modern home, and it's amazing, and blah, 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 and the next thing you know, I'm getting the world tour of the whole house. So um, they are very lovely people that live there, and it is a mid-century modern masterpiece. Oh, whoa. okay. How much do we love fine mid-century modern? How much do we love playful? mid-century modern. I've been to Tomorrowland and Disneyland. I know what the future looks like. And this is a rare example of Googie, Googie, yeah, Googie, not Google, Googie style architecture. That is the most playful version of mid-century modern. This is a, a dingbat apartment in Long Beach. And I'll never forget, I was driving, it's kind of on orange, right near the 405. 
um, kind of near Bixby Knolls, California Heights. And there's a whole street of them and they're all different, but this was the absolute most outrageous one of all. I cannot recommend it enough. I want you to go to the neighborhood and look at this incredible dingbat apartment and well, and behold the glory of its enthusiasm. It's the mood is up and prosperity rule style of that kind of fly me to the moon roof line. I know. Oh, okay. You wanted something a little more old, uh, uh, a little more old world? Not a problem. Long Beach has it all. It is a sampler platter of every architectural style. I mean, there is something interesting around every corner, no matter where you go, east, west, north, and south. And this is a building that I never, ever do not notice when I pass by. I mean, it's like, are we in Europe? This is a castle. Where do we begin? I think it's about 1925. I mean, this is old. I know. And like, you know, when European royalty comes to Long Beach, this is where they stay. They feel the most comfortable here. Speaking of, oh, you guys, I mean, that's why I call my show Long Beach Land, because Long Beach is like a great big theme park. I wish we had time to do the whole show right now to go through all the incredible attractions. But you guys, there's a boat ride. This is like an attraction. If you don't want to go on a gondola, fine. You know you do, though. How about going on a Duffy? Renting a gondola or a Duffy? Well, actually, you don't rent them. Well, you got a gondolier on this one. No, oh, solo mio. You know, all that. But you can also rent a Duffy, and it's more like the Jungle Cruise. And I cannot recommend it enough. I say take to the waters and have a wild ride. Okay, the Pike, the Pike, the Pike, our Coney Island. It was, um, you know, on the south side of downtown Long Beach on the shoreline there from about 1901 until it, well, the last bit of it really kind of got bulldozed in the 70s, but the heyday was the 30s, well, teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and uh, by the 60s and the 70s, it went downhill, but this is a very rare photo of the midway of the pike. I love everything about it, all the neon signs, all the excitement, the Strand Theater, the scooter game, the shrimp, it says fried shrimp and fried shooting. I mean, there's the Lido Ballroom there on the left. Where do we begin? I will tell you that there is only one thing left in place at the Pike uh, that was operating then, and that is the Outer Limits Tattoo Parlor. It is the oldest tattoo parlor in the United States. I cannot recommend it. If you want to bring your friends and impress them from out of town and show them something really unique in Long Beach, well, they'd have to stay six months. There are so many things, but this is definitely one of them. Outer Limits Tattoo Parlor. It's our tattoo parlor, and you know you want to get a tattoo. I know, I do. I have them all planned out, but well, I'll probably never get them. But anyway, I've got them all planned out. But we're not talking about the tattoos I have planned out right now. We are talking about the fact that the Outer Limits has a tattoo museum, which is all the old artwork from the Pike era, and you can see some of it right there. Spellbinding, hypnotizing, and mesmerizing, and fun for the whole family. And speaking of, oh, the Pike. Okay, you guys, if you want to see Pike memorabilia, there's not a lot of it left. However, there is another treasure trove of it on Long Beach Boulevard near Bixby Knolls. It's called Light Loose Light Align. It was actually a game that you played at the Pike, and they've moved. They're still operating. Well, I don't know if they're operating right now, but inside there is the greatest collection of all the vintage stuff from the Pike. And how much do we seriously love the Pike and everything about it? It's hard to find the stuff, but we got it. Vintage, 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 retro, 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 row. 4th Street, Long Beach, world-class vintage shopping. I've been all over this country, halfway around the world, shopping for everything vintage, and Long Beach has it better than anybody else. This is Meow. This is Kathleen. She's been there about 25 years at least. Go in, say hello, and buy a smart little smock, frock, new shirt, a little hat pin, or something, because this is a world-class business that needs to be supported. Absolutely, yes. And speaking of... Oh, so when I did my Long Beach Land show there the first time, you guys, it's been a few years ago. I did it at the Art Theater, you know, on Retro Row on 4th Street. And um, the nice store across the street that actually kind of organized the whole thing in the beginning was in retrospect. They're gone now, but, you know, nothing lasts forever. But anyway, they said, oh, one of our employees made a special portrait for you out of um, Good and Plenty. So I'm like, they did? You're kidding. And so what happened was is that um, I – actually didn't wind up taking it home that day because, well, it's a long story, who cares? But anyway, I went back to get it like three months later and I walked in the store and I said, oh, I've come to pick up the portrait that you made for me. And uh, she says, oh, okay, I'll go get it right now. And she goes in the back and she's gone, she's gone, she's gone. Pretty soon she comes out, tears are streaming down her face. And I'm like, what's wrong, honey? 
And she said, Ooh, rats ate your face off. <laughs> well, anyway, there are no guarantees in life, but it's time to get on. We, we, we could go on and on and on, but we got to go on with the slideshow right now. So are you guys ready for our first award? I think you are. Our first award is for a California Heights resident. It is, oh, thank you to Catherine Constantino and Janice Watson because they spent nearly 20 years bringing their 1931 Spanish Revival House back from the depths of a serious remodel. I know, remodel. Ugh. Underneath that lace stucco, those aluminum ciders and 1970s brick, they saw what the home could be again, keeping all remaining original features they re reversed insensitive alterations and installed fixtures and finishes appropriate to the period. This, this remarkable labor of love is a tribute to stewardship and lasting contribution to the historic neighborhood of California Heights. And how much do we all seriously love California Heights? I know. Anyway, so uh, I think we're cutting to the video right now. I'm Janice Watson. This is my partner, Catherine Costantino. And we live at 3475 Falcon Avenue in Cal Heights. We've lived here about 20 years. It'll be 20 years this coming September. Cal Heights seemed like a really special place. And at the time, there were several Spanish homes on the market. And we decided upon this one because it suited our family. Our daughter was 13 at the time. Our first project um, was to replace all of the windows and the doors on the house, except for the the front door. And we did drapes for our living room and that's how we um, actually met the person who would be our long-term designer and friend, Karen Heiberger. We did our master bath first, Karen did the design. We worked with her really closely to decide on what we wanted to do to make it as close to what might have been um, appropriate at the time. We did our main bath, we did our kitchen, rear of the house when we put down the wood floors. Uh, we used Luke Hiller for that. And that was really important that there was no transition because we really wanted it to feel like the house belonged together. I mean, it was really a goal, but we never felt the house was really, it just didn't, it didn't suit for me what a home tour home should be. So once we completed all the work, uh, Jan was not on board in the beginning at all, <laughs> but it did take some convincing and bribery. Uh, we, we were able to get a beautiful gas heater for our fireplace on the one condition that we'd be on the home tour. So, uh, you know, I, I think that was a really good way to bring, you know, put back in the community and also having people come through and see that you can restore a home that's really damaged and it, you don't have to just make it modern. You can bring it back and, and give it the beauty and glory that it really deserves. So there are several people we would like to thank. Um, first and foremost would be Karen Heiberger and Lugadio. Um, we've worked with them for so many years, but not only as business partners, but they are very close friends of ours. Um, and without them, our vision would not have really come true. Um, Luke Hiller, because he, he was one of the only people that really listened to me when I said I wanted no transitions in my wood floors. Um, Ted Kropp, uh, the plaster, he did a fantastic job in th the original part of the house as well as making the addition look as close to the original as possible right. with the bullnosing. Yeah. And then um, Marie at Revival Antiques, Revival Antiques. and um, Wayne Brown from Five Star Window and Door. I also would like to really thank um, Long Beach Heritage um, for giving us this opportunity because I think it's very important as community members in a historic district that we have this opportunity to share what we've done and what we really love about this house with the larger community. So um, really thanks Long Beach Heritage for this. This is a great honor. Thank you. All righty. Are, are they there to accept their award live? Yes, hi. 
Thank you. You guys are awesome. And you did a beautiful job on your house. Of, we love it, of course. Now we can't wait for it when we can all come over and have a big party there. So you guys, okay, now we're talking about historic district guidelines in Long Beach. Long Beach now has 18 historic districts and counting. Yes, the city's, de the city's development services department launched an initiative to create guidelines tailored to each designated neighborhood. The guidelines describe the unique aspects of each district, explain the architectural styles that define it, and offer guidance and maintenance on alterations. Very important. Yes, it is now easier than ever for owners to update their historic homes while keeping the authentic character of their home and neighborhood. Let's take a look. Hi everyone, I'm Christopher Kuntz, the city's planning bureau manager. I'm Alejandro Placencia, the historic preservation planner here for the city. So long, long ago in 2015, um, we were in a place as a city where we have these incredible um, historic resources in all these different historic districts and we have homeowners that want to do the right thing and want to take great care but don't always know what to do. Um, we process hundreds and hundreds of permits, dozens a day at, at, and sometimes, um, but didn't really have guidance about how to do things consistently and how to do things correctly and if we want people um, to do things right, we need to give them a little help. So whether it's porch steps, or a window, or a roof, um, or a gutter, or painting, or stucco, or all the things that um, are part of the uh, joy, but also responsibility of having a, a historic property. We really wanted to produce something that was visual, um, that would be engaging and would help people do the right thing. All the historic districts really range in uh, different architectural styles, uh, different periods of significance, which are uh, really kind of capture the essence of the city. The design guidelines consist of a little bit of information about uh, the historic district itself, uh, plus the guidelines, and um, that kind of gives you the sort of the basis of starting a project. But I think the other really cool thing about it is, is that then you get into uh, the style guides. So then uh, you, as a property owner, get more information. You get to better understand your uh, craftsman style house, your Spanish style house, or whatever it is, uh, you get to really understand and appreciate, um, you know, what makes a mid-century building or a streamlined modern. What I'm really excited to see is we see a lot more people asking, how can I make uh, my historic home even more sustainable but still keep the, the look and feel the way it should be? So we could not have done this without partners. When you look at the guidelines, those beautiful pictures actually were not taken by Alejandro or I. They were taken by uh, a whole group of volunteers from each uh, neighborhood because we wanted to make sure that the guidelines didn't look like Google stock images and didn't look like uh, anything else that uh, all of the examples come from the neighborhoods in which um, the guidelines reflect. We have a, a talented Cultural Heritage Commission that um, reviewed and approved each set of guidelines and we couldn't have done it um, without them. And then the, um, all those volunteers that exist within um, districts and neighborhoods, you know, they have the umbrella of Long Beach Heritage and we couldn't have done it uh, without you either. Agreed. I mean, I think the community really kind of just helped us, you know, let us know where we got things right, where we got things wrong. Um, and then also just gave us a little bit of um, information and background of the history of the neighborhood. So that really kind of helped us inform uh, a lot of the sort of policy decisions that we made in the guidelines. Uh, I think the last one to also include is uh, GPA Consulting, which also helped us uh, put together uh, a lot of the um, layouts, artworks, and helped write um, the uh, guidelines with us. A big round of applause for the city planners of Long Beach who brought this initiative to life. Yay. Thank you guys for all of your hard work. It is much appreciated and makes such a huge difference and people do notice. Okay, you guys, next, Meadows sign on the Insurance Exchange Building. Our next award is for the restoration of Meadows historic signage in on the Insurance Exchange Building. This gym of downtown Long Beach was built in 1925 as Meadows Boys and Men's Shop. Designed by local architect Harvey Lockridge, the building is a Long Beach historic landmark and listed on the National Register of Historic Places. 
As part of a long-term preservation effort, the Insurance Exchange Building's Architecture Committee commissioned a, part, a painstaking restoration of Early Meadows advertising signage. You guys, the signage, signage, signage. How much do we love signage? I know. Illustrating their strong stewardship and embrace of the building's heritage. Here's more about Meadows sign on the Insurance Exchange Building in downtown Long Beach. My name is Josh Hamstone. We're here at the Insurance Exchange Building, originally Meadows Boys and Men's Shop in downtown Long Beach. So this project began um, originally with being able to acquire the Mills Act, which was a great opportunity for us. Um, when we got it in 2015, I think it had been um, uh, not, not an option for a long time. And uh, so we were considering what the building needed, what, um, what projects um, were worthy of taking on. And um, the first and the biggest obvious thing was the, the original advertising signage. It was built in 1925 and it was built as the Meadows Boys and Men Shop by two brothers, uh, Lorne and Way Meadow, and the architect was Harvey Lockridge. It became the Insurance Exchange Building in 1931 when it was sold, so its uh, life was pretty short-lived under the Meadows uh, Boy Shop. It was converted to residential lofts in 2005. That project was completed, and that was uh, the first time this building saw um, some major restoration and, and renovation, and uh, not only converting it to lofts, but at the same time getting it back to um, it, its original architecture. Hi, my name is Carolyn Laney with KC Restoration. The signage, it was buried, but it was underneath and we could see it kind of peeking through and um, felt that rather than recreating something new, um, it would be nice to just enhance and bring back what was actually there. Originally, this project was going to be done last because it was a large project. Um, so some other smaller projects we have is some more brick repointing on the other side of the building, making some grout more consistent, bringing back the original Meadows inscriptions on the west and south side of the buildings. So I would like to thank the Long Beach Navy Memorial Heritage Association for making it possible with their grant, uh, Mike Douglas for being our point of contact, uh, Karen Clements for her support and guidance throughout this entire process and for her patience. It took longer, far longer than we expected it to. Um, huge thanks to Christy Caldwell at The Ordinary for being accommodating to our crew, working from his rooftop, Alejandro Pacencio with the city and the logistics, uh, the Historical Society of Long Beach for uh, making it possible to know what was up there through their photographed archive, uh, Lee Fukui and Mauna Eichner for recognizing the work and nominating us for this award, Long Beach Heritage for their support and recognition with this preservation award. And of course, Carolyn Laney and her crew at KC Restoration, we're thankful for her amazing and meticulous work and for her patience with us throughout the project. Because of her talented hand in this, generations to come will be able to recognize and appreciate a big part of this building's original history. Thank you, Josh. Oh, there you are. There he is. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time. Thank you, Josh. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Love, love, love what you've done. Um, seriously, I know. I mean, where do we begin? Um, you guys, okay, now it is time for the Joseph and Carrie Tory House. In 2010, the city declared this 1911 home in Wilmore City a public nuisance. It was boarded up and inhabited by squatters. It had no kitchen, no heating, or plumbing. Two years later, it was slated for... Demolition, I know. Chuck and Karen Norcier rescued the house and brought it back to life using only local vendors, contractors, and laborers. They completely rehabbed the home, restoring the remaining original elements. Now a local landmark and listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Uh-huh, I know. This home proves that if a building is still standing, it can be. Restored, a building is never beyond saving. I know. Let's take a look at the Joseph and Carrie Torrey House now. Hello, my name is uh, Chuck Norcier. We're here at 711 Daisy Avenue within the Wilmore District. I'm a retired engineer by training and education. We like uh, historically significant buildings. This is one of several that we've uh, rehabbed over the years. 
Yeah, the Tory family provides a rich history of not only Long Beach, but the property. Carrie Tory, who was the wife of Joseph Tory, she was the sole owner of this particular lot. And she bought the lot next door from Mayor Eno at the time. She was very active in the community. She was a leader and founding member of many uh, social and fraternal organizations. The house is a craftsman architect, uh, very intact, very few modifications to it. It's uh, on the National Register. We uh, achieved that in 2018. So it was built in 1911, and it was built by Crandall and Scott, who are well-known uh, builder architectures in the area. But it's associated with key events that uh, highly influenced the early history of Long Beach. And the 7-Eleven Daisy had been seriously neglected over the years. It had been completely boarded up. Uh, the screens in the attics were all rotted out, so it was full of pigeons. We had squatters. Nothing was operational. There was no kitchen. There was no heating in the building and we had to go restore essentially all the, the functions of a normal building. The city attorney had to sign a contract uh, saying that uh, if we didn't correct the many pages of deficiencies, within six months it would be torn down at our expense. We were very intimidated by it initially, but it was worthy of uh, restoration, so we took it on. So organization of the work, um, you know, we start by securing the building and cleaning it out, making it safe for the workers to come in and start the work. And then it's about getting it occupied as quickly as possible. And, and then after that, we could thoughtfully work through some of the long-term preservation requirements. Yeah, we worked uh, over a year with the famous contractors that you'd read about in the LA Times periodically. I engaged an engineering firm, worked with them directly to come up with a unique solution for the building. We worked closely with Lynette Ferenzi, the historical planner with the city at the time because we wanted to make sure all the stakeholders had a voice in the preservation process. And that helped us get through the process very quickly. We chose to uh, bring it back to its original configuration. So clearly the neighborhood benefits from a restoration like this. The house today is uh, a rental. Uh, we have great tenants that take care of the place for us. The current tenants run a antique dress shop. And here in the Wilmore District, the community is, is very engaged. And in particular, I'd like to thank uh, Castillo Sassion Door and Maureen Neely of House Stories was very instrumental in helping me locate the builder architect and do some of the other research that was important to the National Historic uh, Register application. Thank you, Chuck and Karen Norcier. I mean, that is a miracle what you achieved there. Very much appreciated. All right, you guys, now it is time for Trademark Brewing, Are You Ready? This former auto shop in the Washington neighborhood found new life as a craft brewery and tap room. They do a lot of tap dancing there. In collaboration with owner developer Millworks and tenant Trademark Brewing, the industrial building was transformed for its new use while keeping most of its original features, which we love. I know, those include the woodwork, beams, metal trusses, and even the doors. This long-standing piece of Long Beach history now thrives in the hands of trademark owners Sterling and Ilana Stefan, who says, Sterling, let the building speak for itself. Here we go. I am Sterling Stefan. Alana Stefan. And together we are the founders and operators of Trademark Brewing. When I first met Sterling on our first date, um, he mentioned there was one thing that I had to know about him. Of course, dating in LA, you never know what that's going to be. And he was really into home brewing. Little did I know that that meant one day we were going to open Trademark Brewing. We were drawn to this building after a long and exhaustive search throughout the greater Los Angeles area. When we found this space, however, it was dramatically larger than we were looking for, but it was so neat, it had so much potential that it was something we could not pass up. Um, it's not very often that you find 32-foot ceilings with skylights on a major street with a storefront and a warehouse that can do all of this. Creating a brewery in a 1930s, 1940s building that's mostly been neglected recently is no small task. There was a lot of work that needed to happen and to keep it all organized and on time as best as possible. Hi, I'm Michelle Molina from Millworks. Hi, well, the work that we did to this building was the fun part. 
we got to clean. <laughs> And then bringing in E and E Construction, who really focus on the environmental piece, um, analyzing everything uh, with a, a company called Ensafe, replacing all the asbestos-laden glazing on all of those windows. It was months. Some elements of the preservation of the building were relatively easy and turnkey, uh, in the sense that the building speaks for itself. It's beautiful. Just don't mess it up. Other elements are more challenging. Uh, a favorite story is the marquee sign in front, which now is adorned with neon letters. It's original, it's been there forever. Uh, when we first took the building, it was a little bit in decay. What we found out later on though, is that it had been infested by pigeons and bees. And the poor guys that had to work on this found about 100 pounds of guano and about 100 pounds worth of honey that all had to be removed before they could finally actually seal up the sign apply the letters, paint it the whole works. So the second floor, we also made some updates and preservations. The floors are original for the mezzanine level, which will be our future event space. We also have a conference room that uses the original doors, as well as we did our best to match the trim around all the windows. The floors in this building are really interesting. Um, actually took a lot of research to figure this out. Most of the concrete in the building is original. It's the color green. And there was a material they used way back when uh, called metal drop that they would throw onto wet concrete to harden it and densify it, but also give it this green color. What we found early in the process is if we sanded that and polished it slightly, it was beautiful because you would get into the aggregate and we were able to preserve that throughout the tap room and in most of the warehouse. So the building was originally used for automotive since inception. The front of the building was the entryway for service and there was a little ticket window and a roll up door. So we were able to kind of embrace that and utilize that for the tap room by be being able to find a place like this and use it and kind of preserve some of the heritage was a great honor and an opportunity. And I think it also, to a certain extent, quite honestly, gives us a competitive advantage. We have a unique space, something interesting to see, which people really enjoy and they always comment on when they come in. With a project of this size, we have a lot of people to thank um, to start Millworks for giving us the opportunity and trusting a startup to come in and build a brewery. And also it's worth thanking the city. Uh, we've had some great experiences. Development services, there's too many names to list. In business development, Said in particular was instrumental. It's been a wonderful experience opening a new business in Long Beach. Great job, Trademark. Well, not only is Charles Phoenix a fabulous host, I know, he's also an award recipient tonight for his project. Long Beach Land. For more than 20 years, the ambassador of Americana has thrilled audiences far and wide with his comedic slideshow performances. His massive archive of vintage Kodachrome slides from the 1940s to the 1960s allows his audience to travel back in time and experience the glory of places that used to exist and revisit the ones that are still here today. In 2019, he brought the magic to town with Long Beach Land, celebrating the stories and landmarks of our epic seaside city. Hi, it's Charles Phoenix. Why do I love Long Beach? Where do we begin? Well, you guys, we might as well get it out in the open. Long Beach is a wonderland to discover. There's something interesting around every corner, no matter where you go. The city is a treasure trove of legend, lore, landmarks, architecture of all types. I mean, we could go on and on and on. Go to these places, experience them. Be a tourist in your own town. Go to the bacon broil, eat. Go to Curly's, have a red top. Go to Joe Jost, experience that amazing, rare space and place. Go on a boat ride. There's architecture. Killingsworth Brady, that is one of the greatest architectural firms ever in the history of the known mid-century modern universe. Long Beach Land came to be because the people on 4th Street, mainly the store in retrospect, we talked about doing a slideshow together, and they said, um, what are you gonna do if you're gonna do a show in Long Beach at the Art Theater? And I said, if I'm gonna do a show at the Art Theater in Long Beach, it's gotta be all about Long Beach. I mean, what else would you talk about in Long Beach? There's so much Long Beach to talk about and show and tell, so that's what the slideshow is about. That's how it came to be. And that was in about 2015, I think. 
Long Beach Land is, is a lot of things. It's entertainment, it's information, it's inspiration to go out and experience these places and these spaces and celebrate them and bring your friends there and basically think of Long Beach as the great big theme park that it truly is. That's why I call it Long Beach Land. I need to be the one that shows and tells these things. The way I do preservation is not how a lot of people do preservation. I'm not confrontational, so I cannot throw myself in front of a bulldozer and say, you cannot tear this building down or sign or whatever it is. That's just not me. I'm not like a put up your dukes and fight kind of person. The way I do the fight is by educating. And the way I educate is through my slideshows. I just want Long Beach to get more respect. That's what I want for Long Beach, and that's why I do what I do. I'd like to thank my librarian Teresa Kennedy, for she helps me to keep my slide collection organized. Therefore, when it came time to do Long Beach Land, here are all the Long Beach Land slides. Let's go through them. Also, the people on 4th Street. I also want to thank the Retro Row Association, for they're the ones that kind of got me rolling in the slideshows. And now it gives me great pleasure to present the Preservationists of the Year Award. For their tireless efforts on behalf of our city's heritage, we bestow our top honor in 2020 to Anna Maria and Kevin McGuan. They've made extraordinary contributions to the rich heritage of Long Beach, particularly the Villa Riviera, their longtime home and city icon. Among their many initiatives at the Villa, was helping to secure a Mills Act contract for the building, which provides homeowners with significant property tax relief. Anna Maria also served for many years on the city's Cultural Heritage Commission, and Kevin was appointed to the commission in 2018. This dynamic duo has made an indelible mark on the Villa Riviera and the city as a whole. Good evening, my name is Kevin McGuan. And I am Anna Maria McGuan. And we've been residents of the Villa Riviera for over 30 years. Our first exposure to preservation was when we moved into the building and the homeowners said that we need to pay over $30,000 for an earthquake assessment or the building could be condemned. A wake-up call. Upon moving into the villa, I learned that we had CCNRs. It was a word that I had never heard before, and that really started my involvement in the building. I was part of the committee of the bylaws committee that converted eventually the building into a condominium. We used to be on your own. Then I served on the board in the 90s. So I asked the board, because we didn't have the means, if they would allow me to do a fundraiser. They agree. We were able to, in two months, obtain the funds, and then we engaged historic resources. And in 1996, we were listed in the National Register of Historic Places. Some significant events that have occurred over the years, like any old building, we're 90 years old, that uh, we have to address, such as the painting, the paint project that we did, was uh, something of significance. During the paint project, we were also able to restore the front door to its grandeur. Uh, we received a grant from the Navy Memorial Heritage Trust, which we've pr we fabricated the new door. And to this day, we get so many compliments. In 1997, I approached the Cultural Heritage Commission to consider expanding the Mills Act benefit to multi-unit dwellings, such as the Villa Riviera. It was back until 2004 that we were successful in the city to expand the benefit to multi-unit dwellings and this has continued to benefit many of the historical buildings in our city. The one thing that gives me um, joy living in this historical building is as people come by, uh, either to look at a gargoyle, take a picture of the doors, uh, the roof being lit at night, 
Uh, it's just amazing uh, the interest that people have. For me, it's a matter of retaining these wonderful buildings who we will never be able to replicate because the labor is no longer there. So being able to help maintain, restore these buildings for the future is what is rewarding to me. I am happy to share that I had wonderful mentors in Long Beach, such as Karen Clements, Pamela Seegers. Well, I'd like to make a shout out to Spectre Corporation. Uh, they were instrumental in the paint restoration that we, we completed back in 2009. I also would like to thank uh, Ruth and Lair for some of her wonderful advice to me while I serve on the Cultural Heritage Commission. And also Martin Weil. Martin Weil was an architect historian who really did a thorough job in terms of making sure that the color schemes that we had both inside the lobby as well as out uh, were matching the original paint scheme. I would personally like to thank the City of Long Beach, uh, Mayor Robert Garcia, former mayors, city managers, that without their help, we would have not been able to complete many of the projects. They were difficult, and sometimes we need certain variances, and they were very understanding. This will be our last home, and we love living in the downtown. Uh, the beach, the bike path, the, the symphony, the theater, the restaurants, um, we couldn't be happier. Um, and so we've been here for over 30 years and uh, we're going to be here for an, at least another 30 years. Right there? <laughs> I don't know if I'll leave that long. <laughs> and I think we have the Maguans. There they are, Kevin and Anna Maria, congratulations. And thank you for all your hard work. And now, you guys, it is time to toast all the winners. I'm proud to be one myself. Thank you. I also want to say thank you to all of you who are involved in the preservation community, who are involved in any sort of preservation in the realm of Long Beach land. It is a wonderland to discover a world-class treasure trove of attractions of all kinds. And thank you also to the folks who head up Long Beach Heritage. And to all the winners, it's time to say cheers. So cheers. cheers. Okay. So you guys, um, oh, wait, what's supposed to happen now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're hanging around because it's time for our Zoom party. Zoom party time, you guys. This is Madison Mooney coming to you from the Long Beach Playhouse. I find that a simple and elegant mimosa is a great way to celebrate any achievement. So congratulations to all of tonight's awardees. Let's drink up. Cheers. The Long Beach Playhouse has been your local community theater here for the past 91 years, and we've been figuring out a lot of fun ways to bring programming in this online digital world. So please head to lbplayhouse.org for both our Shakespeare production of As You Like It and our Director's Choice Online Scene Festival. Again, that's at lbplayhouse.org. And congratulations again to all of tonight's awardees.